we last left off? Our dear pirates had found themselves in a great bit of trouble. In our pirate adventures, they have found themselves in the Astral Sea with Krillic Cain alongside them and a revelation of knowledge that he follows the same master as their own Elizora. Deciding not to approach him with this information and instead keep it in the hold as an eventual leverage, they continued their week. Krellig decided that if he was going to work with them, he needed to know what they were capable of doing and instigated a sparring. In this spar, they fought bravely, fiercely. Some impressed, others not so much. And here we are in the second week of the journey. And I ask you all in this time, what would you like to do? I don't think Vela will do much. I think she'll be sort of preparing preparing for what's to come because I don't think we still we don't know what the plan actually I don't think he's ever told us what the plan actually is um, she'll probably like every now and again like every other day or something sort of go up to him and just say look what is this plan you're keeping us in the dark kind of thing um, whether he actually responds to that I don't know but she'll keep she'll, she'll try every not pestering as such but every, every time she sort of sees him wandering around if you if you ask you sort of as said, he'll just say there is a place that we will have to go I believe you will have the capability to go there with me but look Vela in the time we are looking at now trees bend to the wind rock is carved by water flexibility always wins against stubbornness just takes time be patient I will tell you when the times are out. Such a non-answer. Okay. You I'll do not lead it. without learning a few tricks. You can't lead if you don't know what you're leading them into. That is dependent on if you know or not. Right. She rolls her eyes and walks off. Try again later. Any more for any more? Can, can I grab you for one second? Come on in. Okay. She'll, um, editor will pull out her book. You've probably seen this book every now and again. Um, but it's, yeah, it's it's her book. Alright, Camp, I want you to write in this. And she opens it up and flicks to a page. So it's basically got her name in it and nothing else. It's just her name. And she's asking you to write in it as well. What could go wrong? I uh, know, exactly. When a warlock asks you to sign it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> could you sign this? Oh, don't use a pen, use oh, your blood. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, literally. Um, what? <coughs> what is this? What is, what's, uh, what, uh, what is it? What, what is this book? It's my book. Excellent. Um, why do I need to sign this book? Let's just say it's a insurance plan. In case you or I go down in a fight, this book might allow us only once to stay up just that little bit longer. Can I insight to see if there's any information there being withheld? Like, I'm with... There's like a butt in there that I'm not hearing. You can a certainly butt. insight, and uh, Elizora can either be a deception or persuasion. Don't tell us, just give us the number. Oh, I got a 13. We got 10. Uh, I trust you to imitate on how earnest or convincing your argument is. Does it feel like there's a butt, Elizora? Not to her. Maybe it's not as much 
detail as you want, but it's definitely there's no but. Mm. Is there? I'm not making a pact with no uh, with Jones or anything, am I? Oh no, no. This is just a insurance policy in case you or I go down in, in a fight. If okay. one of one of us do, mm -hmm. one of us, whoever goes down first, well. I assume this means death when you say go down, not passing out. Because that happens to me a lot. It's passing out. De death, death, death is a um, different ball game. You got to make your own deal for that. This is just if you uh, get knocked out and fight in a fight. Okay. This so might not life. take you down all the way. Okay. But so only you can do it once. Life expectancy or something. No, no. Like well, there's that. no, no. This is as clean as a deal can get between two, a cap between the captain and with a warlock, <laughs> with a warlock, with who's with a pack with, a with, with the captain and yeah. her first mate slash quartermaster. It is a sacred bond between you and I, Layla. As much as I've been on these seas, and as little as you've been on them as well, there it is a sacred bond that any crew will pick one over the, over any other deal. Crew before everyone else. Especially Captain Quartermaster slash first mate. Ah, <sighs> Very well, Elizora. We'll see how this goes. I'm trusting you on this one. Oh, good. I trust you too. You'll sign it. Thank you, Card. To close the book, right. stow it away. I'll uh, leave you to it then. She'll uh, go and do other things. I'll put it in the chat what actually you've agreed to. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say. Oh, okay, I thought I was going to find out later. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it, happen, it happens the so it's called Gift of the Protectors, and it's basically the, the first of the person people whose names are in the book. Don't drop the zero hit points. Hit hit drop hit to one instead. Okay, nice. Okay, yeah, it's a legit thing. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Or it wasn't just a and it's sign on my as yearbook. well. That's, yeah. Oh, as well as poem. Yeah, exactly. Man, that could have been a lot of things. <laughs> I know. It's like, when you die, I'm going to take your body. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's a different contract with Umbra, you know. Yeah. So that's an Umbra contract. Yeah, true. Okay. Tim, is there anything else you would like to do in your week? I don't think so. Come around with the madman, I think. Deliver sermons, the usual. Wait, hold on. Chum around with Madman. Chum around with the Madman. I feel like they had a rapport. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. If you try to talk to the the Madman, the only thing you'll find is he's in he's in the room. That's it. He he doesn't really leave Alaris's room. <laughs> he has no hobbies other than scrolling on the walls. No. No. That's literally all he does. And when you speak to him, he speaks back, but it's always in the mutterings. No information to gain from him. Um, that's him then. I'm good. Okay. Cool. Loris. I was going to have a discussion with our little posse and uh, decide about fucking with the screen. Um, using his power to either get a factual secret or learn about objects. Uh, yeah, I want to discuss it between the four of us to see if then we have an opinion on what it should be. It's kind of an open thing. It's going to be useful for all of us, so Alaris is going to yeah, pose a question. We have these two options. If we go with the object, what should it be? Can you control what object you learn about? Or is um, it just, you know, I'm going to learn about a fork in the kitchen? I don't think you, I can. You, you, oh. you can control what object you learn about when it's a when it's a specific yeah. thing, but when it's like the secret or the skill, 
it's a little less controlled. But when it's when it's about a specific object, you can. I will say you have to know the object that you pick. You have to be aware of it and mm -hmm. be within reason able to access it now. Okay. Because what you'll essentially what be do you doing mean, is what do you mean by getting access? well access in the sense of you've touched it, you've seen it. It's something that you could hold. Familiar. If you went, it, it's something familiar Does to it, you. Some, something if... you could go and get in like mm. the next day or two like it's the type of thing that you would go yeah what if it, because what, what if you're it... doing is you're going i want to take this object and i want to pluck from a string where a piece of me has gone i'm going to learn everything about this object over the next however many right. years days weeks that so you, i've decided so you have to, to be like thing. holding the item or have held <sighs> holding it have held it it within reach essentially within well, accessibility so, so the so the question the thought i just had i don't know whether it will necessarily fall into that criteria i guess it's down like the branching paths as well but, right the multiverse sort of yeah. thing yeah the the, the th thought i had was quellig's crown yeah so you haven't touched it but you've really seen held it, it. familiar but with it. it so yeah and you're familiar with it so i'd say it's one of those where it's like it's it's a harder one to grab there's still going to be a check but yeah i suppose that's more more like it think of like teleportation the more you know about it the more accessible it is the better yeah. chance you have of learning the most about it the yeah. less accessible it is i mean you could be talking like a couple hundred years into the future is the only time you manage to find it again like yeah. it's 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 one of those where it's that Equally, um, just to put this out there, if there's anything you've had before in your past, then it could be a branch that you stemmed off of when you owned it in your past. You took that with you and you focused very much on that item and that branching path up to now, rather than uh, it necessarily having to be from the future. Something you Cause... owned and all have been in contact with, yeah, or are familiar that's... with. Yeah, because the crown would have been quite handy. Because interesting, it's the only artifact Kane is holding, even though he has the other, you know, has a bunch of other ones. It's the only one he's chosen to keep on his person, you know, rather than the sword or anything like that. And it's like, there's got to be a reason for that, and it just happens to be the one that can control people's minds. The sword was bad yeah. news, though. Like it was proper, like corrupting people. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I know what the sword. It was the does. cutlass? Yeah, I know. I know it what raises it... dead bodies. Oh, is that what it does? Yeah, I've not got any of that in my list because the skeletal scimitar. I've not got that. Raises dead bodies. Right. It does skeletony okay. things. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had a whole ship based around its premise. <laughs> Actually, no. You know what? <laughs> Could be handy. The trident finding out about the trident because we're literally about to go down this thing if Craig Kane's not telling us anything about it what do you mean Elazor we had the trident though no I know but that's what I mean it'll be familiar you'll yeah, know about it future, but, but if it's help. in the if you can get it to find out from the future we might be able to find out where it is plan ahead because Kane's being cagey about this and I don't like it um we might be able to glean something potentially out of it yeah, well, would we be able to get like those if details what... are those details because like what I'm getting what I'm the vibe I'm getting from this plucking strings is like the what it for how it functions its utility it's there's not knowledge about it it's just how it works well that's knowledge about it right yeah you learn about the object if its location is static you learn how to well the thing is we don't need to do but... that with any of the artifacts because because the only reason that we'd want to know about the artifacts is to ask the big question of what are we supposed to do with them? Are we supposed to destroy them? Are we supposed to use Can them? Can they be destroyed even? Yeah, exactly. Like That's the information we need. But Which might be revealed to us more likely through the secret. Maybe we should yeah. go with that. Yeah. We don't have any I strong feel... motive for the item, right? No, because the thing is, if the item is just going to tell you about location mm -hmm. or function, I don't think that's going to work for what yeah. we want. Yeah, I agree. So I think secret's probably the best. Even though you can't mm -hmm. really control the secret, just keep doing it, we'll get something good eventually. <laughs> Literally, it's 
Hopefully, if we can find out. What do you mean? We've got two good things, right? Yeah, we've no, got, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've yeah, had yeah, two yeah, good yeah. things so I mean, far. We're owed, we're, a, we're owed a few duds, and then we'll get something good again. Yeah, we've I had your answer, yeah. and we've had the fact that yeah. Aramil's going to pop up at some point. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think I think it's worked for us well so far. So yeah. I think, yeah, I think that one's yeah, going to probably be more useful than yeah the item. I don't fully know because I haven't gone down that option yet with the objects, but yeah, I was imagining it could be a potential flashback, so I could see. Yeah, where what, the object is, but what if I the flapjack's know. just the Elizar holding it? <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> Can you imagine, yeah, in a couple of days' time or something. And, and it's, it's shut and, up. exactly <laughs> <laughs> this thing's fucking annoying. Piss off, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I said it's only really worth doing that sort of thing if you're going to do that kind of thing, it's better to do it with the fleet ones, but we're not familiar enough with them. I would agree, the um, crown's probably the only one. That's the most yeah. what well, I think probably the, the only other one we've not had meaningful to con direct contact with. Yeah, it's going to cause suspicion if I try and get close to it. So yeah, he's not going to he's not going to let you touch it. Um, oh. Well, on this branch of path. No, but you, uh, it's about making the teleport check easier. You know, so if you had touched it, he'd be more familiar with it. It would make it more like because the problem is if you try and do it as the way he is now, it's most likely going to get a dud. Because it's it's a thing he's not he's, he's seen it, but that's about it. Um, oh. Yeah, let's just pluck the future. I think pluck the secret. From the, I think, pluck I from think time. The secret's, yeah, I think the secret's probably going to be the better the better one. Okay, we're going to lock that in. Yeah. That yeah. Good. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> now, this time, Alaris. Uh, I would like you not only to roll me a d100, but could you also roll me a d4? Okay. I'm going to be a right any back. Order? Oh. Jesus. D100 first, then the d4. He's got Maybe one of four in the room. He's got well, one of four secrets four. that he wants to share. Oh. But I was thinking that he's going to start getting nosebleeds because it's going to start <laughs> fucking him over like wish. You fucking know, heroes. He can, uh, he's, yeah, exactly. he's gonna start now. getting strained because he's not actually a timekeeper yet. He's using timekeeper powers, so he might actually like oh. screw him over. Sixty-eight. I was one off. <laughs> if, you one, if you get a one on the D four, <laughs> I did. I did go one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We got there eventually. Yeah. Nice. I reckon it's one out of four secrets Arthur had. Prepped. Maybe. Maybe. Mm. He's got to start prepping them at this point. You know? He's had a, he's had a bit more time. He probably expected us to go down this route of yeah, the magic secrets. Although again, it depends on whether it's past or future, right? Because we've had two future ones. This might go backwards. Yeah, but it's like a future you had or could have had a past you yeah. could have had. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Was it? It's like, a future. It be, it's a future he will have be, actually, and be, a past. It could he be could really have interesting had. if you had like a, an alternate past where you were actually part of the fleet. Yeah. That'd be an interesting little bit of insight. Um, yeah, so. fuck the actual knowledge of the fact that you joined the fleet in the past, fucker. <laughs> in a past. Yeah. In a past, you did. Yeah. How, 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 how dare, dare you? you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like getting in an argument in a dream. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. literally. Okay, D100. Yeah. D4. One. You are pulled towards this string, yanked almost. Before it was more you finding your feet and landing. This time it is as if another force is involving itself. And as you appear, you stand in a cave next to a reflective puddle, but this puddle doesn't look like water, it looks cosmic, like the very ripples of it could send you through somewhere else entirely. And you see, in this cave, there is a space of 
Uh, you see in the distance of this cave, there is not the madman you know, but similar in physique, creatures, guardians, down a hallway. And as you're looking around this room, you see Aramil, much younger than you've seen him before. What do you say? Oh shit, I can interact. Um, uh, do, do I know if it's future or past? Or this Can't one? tell. Can't tell. Um, I don't know, what's, what's going on? Where are we? Lars, we were just talking. Wait, I know what this is. You said this would happen, but I didn't think it would be now. Or, I guess it's then for you. This is strange. You've already told me this is happening. Ah, I don't have much time. Um, hmm, okay. Uh, what did you say? What did you say? Uh, right. Okay. <clears throat> Ignore everything else you're seeing right now. I'm sure it's very interesting, but you'll get here eventually, so don't worry about it. You need to remember the words I am telling you now, for without it, you will not, f you will not succeed. You will fail. The only way you're ever going to succeed when you need him most, call on the madman. The madman as you know him. He will save so much more than you could even imagine. But you have to call him by his name. He is Ferempus, the meddler. There is... I think that's all I can tell you. Pretty sure. Oh, you're going to do great things. It's going to be amazing. But, uh... All I can tell you is, Ferempus, the meddler, when you need him most, call his name, and he will answer. And as those words kind of iterate out, the vision begins to fade, and you just see him uh, going, Lars, oh, you're coming out of it. Oh, it you're gone. <laughs> wow, well, okay. Just enough time for him to say it. I think I'll probably do this around around the guys as well. So they yeah, they can experience me going through and I'll relay what happened. What what does it look like to us? That's a really good question, I love that. So as Laris kind of takes a moment, first his eyes just kind of zone out like he's looking to a memory. As you look at his eyes, you see these like points of starlight shoot out like his entire pupil his colored irises just go to these pinpricks points of light and the rest of his eye darkens and for you it's a split second it flashes almost like that and then he's back out so for the rest of you it's barely been two seconds. Did it, did it work? It seemed it almost sounded like it was a dud. That definitely was. That was different this time. I was able to interact with it somehow. What, in two seconds? Uh, it was one, two seconds for me. Huh. Probably like a, a minute, almost. I'm being much quicker. So, uh, did you find any interesting nuggets for us? Very interesting. I believe I was in the future. Okay. I don't know, I don't know where I was, but Aramil was there. And when I asked him what was going on, where were we? The most important thing he relayed is that the madman is going to save, save a lot more than we think he will. And that he has a name. I'm gonna butcher uh Formbus. <laughs> the meddler. Meddler. I don't like the meddler bit, but Yeah, that's yeah. a bit that's a bit not very reassuring. But he's gonna save us, is he? If we call him by his name, and if we call on him when we need him most. Right. So does that mean we have to sort of keep him nearby at all times? 
I was about to say, mm -hmm. how loud are you speaking? Well, we're probably <coughs> doing it in the in the meeting room or something, I would imagine. That's a, where this would probably end up happening. Uh, uh Alaris isn't very area. loud anyway. Cool, just checking. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess we just have to make it so we can hear you. I guess. Well, you've got your weird talking magic thing, right? So you, I guess that should be relatively straightforward for you. Yeah, just message him. We oh, my him. message. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, she doesn't know it's message. I can call. <laughs> I can call on him. Okay. We need him most, but it means he's a crucial asset we need him around. Okay, so he's not just uh, not just graffitiing your bedroom then. No, wh whatever happens, whatever this Kalani might be, he's gonna be crucial. We're gonna need him. Maybe he's writing a spell on your walls or something. Who knows? Yeah, we'll see how much he's meddling. Hopefully for our advantage, mm. our benefit. <coughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. Well, I guess that's reassuring. At least we know we don't throw him overboard. So, yeah. That was ever a plan. No, I know, but you know. It's a bit of a weirdo. He hasn't really done much. Kind of just dead weight at this point. He's better well, than some other people we've had on our ship. <laughs> Without him, That's I wouldn't have learned true. about this. All this I plucking. guess. I guess so. Yeah. I don't know. Since Umbra are these eccentric types, not a not a fan. It's not his fault. He's he's forgotten exactly who he was, and yeah, he's gone through a lot of shit. I think. I suppose the question there is: Is he going to remember that he can do anything to help us if he's forgotten? Well, maybe the name. Remember, isn't, isn't, maybe isn't, maybe isn't the name slaps them out of it, you know. Yeah. Suppose, do we yeah, say it now? Or do we wait for the moment? I don't. I don't. Sounded know like women are waiting. I don't know, man. You two are. You two are buddies. You. 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 It, you know. You know better than us now. The way Aramor said it, you know, call upon him when you need him most, and say right. his name. Yeah. Just am. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair Wait for the moment. Okay. It's lightning out here. What? <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Well, we'll have to just keep that to one side for for whenever we need it. But uh, yeah, don't like this whole meddling business. But well, hopefully he's meddling with the uh, with with them, not us. I suppose you said you're going to see um, this Aramil fellow soon, right? On this trip, so maybe you can ask him some proper information. I'll be very curious. Maybe that was it. Yeah. Maybe. No, I suppose so. Mm. Have you? <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Maybe. You just said that fateful day, right? Didn't need to be any time soon. Just could have been... Well, did, you've so seen... You've now it, seen that say, fateful day. But didn't he say it was the actual sea? Is yeah, it? yeah, it's the actual sea. I mean, Were you in the actual sea when you saw him just now? No, it was some sort of cave. Cave. Could have been in somewhere yeah. in the actual sea. There's land somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a useful piece of definitely useful piece of information. This could um, be very useful in the in the days and you know the days ahead. Mm -hmm. Just keep it between us. Hopefully, oh, yeah. Craig is about. Sure, he's too busy doing something or other, not telling us what's happening. But you know, we're all capable. I'm sure we'll be able to throw whatever he, you know, handle whatever he throws. That's what tomorrow. Now? Well, hopefully tomorrow we'll find out. Wait and see. So, yeah. Good work, Alaris. As always. Hi, Alaris. Great. That's all. Let's uh, rest up for tomorrow. Best you can. Okay. I will say this is final call. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else anyone would like to do before the plan, whatever it is, is enacted? Point of no return. Point of no return. 
Stop. Turn back now if you want to complete all your quests. Yeah. Yeah. Can I, can I go back, now back? If you want to do can all I your quests? Can I go back quests? to the goblin lady that was selling yeah. all those funky bits? And upgrade my shell. <laughs> <laughs> go faster striped. You need to go faster striped. Uh, no, no. That's fine. Okay. The next day, you wake up feeling well rested. Krellig looks at all of you. And says, now. Dryden does not. Here, here, it is below us. In the depths. I have a way to take us there. But to go in will mean leaving the rest of your crew behind. And for us, it may be a one way trip. If it is, I would highly suggest you give them some commands on how to proceed. And I was wrong. It is not just the four. It is not just four of you, but in fact, I can take five. So, if you wish to bring someone with you, you can. Uh, this has made me bring the madman. Oh, yeah. I think you can bring whoever you like. Although, um, or maybe the madman's actually the way we get back. I don't know how far we're going. I mean, it sounds like know. we're basically going to dive off and may never return. Us. And never return basically or if Ellis is a really smart way for us to get back but I feel that yeah I think we need fans to our ticket back I think yeah. yeah but then the question is whether he needs to be with us or not well message is a limited range anyway right yeah, so choice, but... is it unlimited range no like 120 you can give him a letter and tell him to open this in 10 hours you know I think we should bring him with us if you don't want to take him and you want to take a fighter with you, you know, you do what you like. I would have I would have said that normally, but now this whole thing's gonna kind of... Yeah. I mean it's it... decisions, decisions. He's not gonna be able to like do anything. <laughs> Cause yeah, exactly. I mean realistically you just have to keep him alive. Oh, this is the thing, right? Because realistically, who would we take? Like Elena has proved that she can't do much, really. To be fair, fight. any of the um, consumers by by nature of how they're started. Yeah, they're not going to be any good to us down there. The only one that could the only one that could potentially be of interest to us. I don't even think he would be. It's Temrin, because just because he's like studied. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, I was looking for the list. Should we take the boy? <laughs> take the boy with us. The boy take is the a boy. Team. Let's just take the boy. He will learn to be a man. The bait yeah, for Umbra to turn it. Yeah. Proper meat shield. That would be hilarious if we took the boy and he just suddenly just turned out to be like, I don't know, a dragon in disguise. You know? Flash this entire him. time. Yeah. Oh, goes super silent. It's awesome. Yeah. That would be hilarious. But yeah, I think, honestly, I don't know who else we would end up taking that would be worth taking. Yeah, if anything, it'll annoy the uh, Commodore. <laughs> Having the madman with us. Yeah, true. Although, yeah, that would be quite entertaining. I know, I think a timekeeper is going to be just more helpful than anyone else, even if, you know. Yeah. Than anything else. I mean, the only other thing would be someone from his crew that's, that's you know, useful, but. Yeah. No, let's just let's go with the madman. And <laughs> yeah. then. We can just yep. tell the crew, wait a week, and if not, yeah. How, how long are we expected to be down, like down there? This crew, these crew, what I should ask that to credit, like how long, are we, you know, going to be down there for? Once we are down there, there is a small distance we have to go, but I believe it will not be far. If it were me, I would say if we do not trip. A return by the end of the day. Give us two days. <laughs> Just give us some leeway. <laughs> keep, keep it. Keep. But if, they, but give us well at least a day. If it, and two days if you can. If it gets dangerous, then get out. If you lose sight of the crown on your ball on the globe, and get out. I, I believe we're going to have to take the globe with us. I'm guessing where we're going, we're going to need all the artifacts. We don't have all the artifacts. Why are we taking the globe? We're going to need the globe to locate the exact location of the trident because when we are down there, it is 
the pitchest black you've ever known. There is no way any of us are going to be able to see when we are down there. That is its exact purpose. Bill's blind, and he knows how to operate it. So he's literally like, the, he'd probably be the person we'd take, right? Then. He probably just says, if you are willing to accept my help, I can use the globe. Guess that's the only op yeah. Right, that's the is it is it wa is it water? Is it is it definitely like breathable water down there? It's like water. A an ocean of kinds. Would a creature suited for swimming be able to go down there? They should. It acts in the same manner. Oh, we can You'll be able, be able to, to breathe, breathe down, down there. there. We can breathe down. Can we breathe? You down? can breathe down there just fine. Think of your lightest dream, where you could almost fly. Fine, like I'll take the. Kind of I'll take the glow. We'll have down there. Okay. And I'll use my familiar, as well as how, old Billy Boy, does his. Assuming it makes you blind. Do not yeah. worry about changing its form. Everything will be able to breathe down there. We are talking about something like an ocean, but not a dream space where all sorts of beings can survive. All right. She'll make rot an, an owl then. As you please. Because they don't provoke opportunity attacks. <laughs> Does she have anything with blind sight or anything like that? If it's that dark. Familiar with blindsight? What? I don't know, man. You never know. There's a lot of animals in there. You never know. I don't think I can pick a mole. No, I pick an owl. I've got one final thing to ask all y'all when we go down there. Dreams torment the mind. If you have to, you will have to be perhaps dragged against your will, some of you. Some of you may be fine. There are things down there that will haunt you, perhaps, to the rest of your days. And there are other things in there that will be a wonder to behold. Are you still prepared to take the plunge? I don't dream. Perks of being in and out. Not yet, you don't. Just keep our eye on the prime. Good. Now, I'm assuming it's you four, definitely. Now, who's my fifth? looks at him and is like are you sure yes enough questions all right and he sort of stands on the edge kind of stands up holding a rope on the uh on the banister of your ship just goes stand with me and take my hand well how were you, were you? Oh. <laughs> hang on a second I need to get I need to familiarize myself with this globe first. I can't just plunge in without just just having my hand. I need to get I need to attune to it. I need to just get a little bit familiar with it. It's twists, it's turns. Can't go in prepared. All, all right. We didn't get a long rest, did we? Yeah. You did. You yeah, did. We've so got yeah. another long Sorry, rest. I'm just on my bed. I'm just gonna tell you because. My notes are sprangled. Um, you can use it to locate any of the artifacts. That's its natural capability and its natural form. It, you'll be able to just get it up. No action in a bonus action, in fact. You can reveal the map showing the artifacts. On another level, action, you have locate object, but there is no limit on the range. Uh, equally, you have locate person, no limit on the range. Hmm. And if you want to get a bit more fun, you can roll a d20 and activate a secret capability. Do it. 
What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> what I'm doing right now. I'm going to do when it's the most. How are we going to know what it is? Exactly. <laughs> you may never know. Wait, do I? Yeah. Wait, so it's, is it at any given time I roll a d20, or is it I roll a d20 now and that's the secret ability? No, 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 no. So at any given time, when you want to use the secret ability, you roll a d20, and because it's a puzzle piece, right? So you'll put it in a random configuration right. and it'll have a secret ability. Right. Entirely dependent on your roll, though. Something, uh, you may roll something and it may do nothing. But you may roll something that may do something masterful. You don't know. Cool, that's fine. Um, it's a Pokemon, me Pokemon uh, move metronome, isn't it? Really, yeah. it's just a random thing. Uh, cool. So, th and then again, I assume she's blind. Then. And yes, as soon as you attune to it, you are blind. Can I detune? Uh, can I detune to it at will as well? With this one, you can. Okay. Is that instant, or is that is that another few hours? Uh, detuning will take one minute. That's not so bad. But then you don't want to be getting to a situation where you want to attune to it and you can't. Because it takes an hour to attune. It takes an hour to attune, it'll take one minute detune to it. Well, she's got the, you've got the familiar thing, right? So you can do the do the build technique. Use my, use my familiar. Do the build. Doesn't do the build. So out of interest, now that obviously that's passed over, does Bill, like... He was already blind. Now? Was that's he already the, blind? That was the point. He's, no, he's got, there's a guy called No Eyed yeah. Bill. Well, I thought he might have got that after. We don't know when that, that name came in and when he got the. No, I'm, I'm still blind. It's never changed. Uh, I've always uh, been blind. Uh, no Eyed Bill. That's a shame. He actually lifts his flax and he shows you he was literally born without eye sockets. Well, they're just flat. It's just like yeah. skin. Yeah. Can I heal well, that? And he just goes, I am. <laughs> but No Eyed Bill. That's. Um... Got greater restoration. That's that's not a I was born for the love of Christ. That's some existential Tim. shit. That is. Just <laughs> I, I was born this way. <laughs> no way in hell am I going to need eyes now. Well, okay. might be a sensory over sensory overload. Well, he uses yeah. his, like you have he uses no his eye. parrot to to see. Well, oh no, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah wouldn't well, it be more convenient? Yeah, but I'm then he okay, sees. So you can't restore something that was never there in the first place. No, no. You'd have to literally like wish him eyes. Mm. I think that's the only thing you could really do. That would or work. reincarnate him. Like, uh, well, then, you know. Yes, also it's, would work. It, it's a very large uh, existential question to restore someone's disability, <laughs> and if they want to as well. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> exactly. All righty then. Yeah. I suppose we wouldn't be able to tell if Elazora was blind because she has like no pupils anyway. I was going to say, the, the eyes don't change. Yeah. Fair enough. Freaky. I was going to do something interesting, like, funny with that plot, but I'm going to. But... Alright, now I'm ready, right, let's go. <laughs> we wait now. <laughs> let us take the plunge. You must take my hand. And well, each of you take, take each other's you hands. Got, you got five hands? Or... I'm not no, touching. I'm saying one of you take my hands and we chain across. Captain, you do it. I am yes. really regretting this decision. Please be <laughs> madman. Well, we, we can we can make the madman take his hands. None of us have to do it. No, available. Available will spare everybody else. She'll, she'll hold his hand. Well, both. Don't get used, don't get used to it. No, we, <laughs> we have to jump together at the same time for this to work. Oh, I know. Is, is it one, two, three, go? Three, two, one, go? Three, two, one, and then go? <laughs> For the love of the gods, <laughs> do, do, we, jump do we go? <laughs> pull, pull a pose, you know, jump in the air. Yeah. That's such a bad see, count. <laughs> you see him, like, face palming with high intensity, and then just goes, right, we go now. And he <laughs> launches himself up, and then he... You see him drag his hands around the air in like this sigil. And then it he points his fingers down and you see the water kind of get a uh, luminescence to it. Like this greenish, bluish glow in a ripple effect. And that's where he goes down and the rest of you are almost sucked into it. And you feel like these raging has passed through you it's like you're being battered but there's no 
pressure change. There's no underwater feeling. You're just being plunged through it. No, I know the butthole. <laughs> and then you, put, as as it's going through, you eventually slow down and stop. You're not quite touching any ground, and you very gently settle to what seems like a bottom. And there is a puddle, almost a lake of water underneath this ocean. And now we walk. But what is it like around us? Is it just like empty space? It is a darkened space. Okay. Does it feel like air? On, it's kind of this weird in between. It's like a it's like a humid day. A the pressure's there, but you're mm. still breathing. Gross. Yeah. You make your way through. I would like yeah. you all to roll me wisdom saving throws, please. Alaris, as you brought him, you can roll one for the madman. Yeah. It's a 12 from me. He rolls with disadvantage, by the way. Oh, no, it's 15. He's already mad. What's wrong with that? Didn't make it affect him anymore, right? Yeah, exactly. He's there. Depends Can't on get the double disadvantage. <laughs> you know? Um, who do I give this to? Oh, who should take the nap one? Oh, no. <laughs> Depends on the order you roll it, I think. Yeah, like who yeah you should have decided first. first. Yeah. Don't forget everybody. Well, I, I put myself first, so I got 26. And he got a nap one. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget those who have them. DM inspiration points. I don't think any of us... No, none of us have them. Uh, Space flight sheets, none of us have them. Really? Yeah. I think so. Or one of you have them. That's the other campaign, I think. Spent them all. Unbelievable. Spent them all. Yeah. I wasted mine because of the... Bait you did into using it against the old frog boy. I believe that I was the one that chose to use it. You chose to use it. That's it was either party the... wipe or survive. What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> but you did just fine. <laughs> uh, 15. And Elarius will see into the future, but when he got an inspiration point, and bring it back with him. <laughs> it's a viable possibility. <laughs> After the next long rest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As you walk through. So, get, uh, so he got an at one, you got a 26. Vela, you got a 15. Yeah. At Azora? 15. Tim? 13. Oh, sorry, 12. Okay. Tim, the madman. Your mind is swarmed with nightmares. Do I run my hawk? Well, it's owl. Your owl is fine. Okay. Almost unaffected. Krellig equally looks like he's seemingly unaffected. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. He first the madman begins to no 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 too 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 loud too bright too 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 dangerous 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 not safe safe not safe not safe here. Tim, you feel the need to run. No, just run away. There's too many dangers here. Mm. We don't like it down here. Don't worry, Tim. It's we'll scary. It. You're it's my friend it's here, it's Tim. Sure, sure, it's sure. really scary. <laughs> <laughs> she'll um, she'll uh, uh, put her hand on him. No, don't worry, Tim. We'll be fine. Can she cast light on his shell? Mm-hmm. And just kind of go. Oh, there you go. See, you got a bit of extra. Does it do anything actually first? Yeah, can we even do, see anything? Any effect? Uh, Tim, you don't want to move it anywhere further on. You want to run back. So the light doesn't help either. Okay. Okay, is that the only thing I can do? Or can I, um. You can do anything else you like, but you cannot move forward with the direction everyone else is going. Turn around. Willingly. 
<laughs> I can't. Can yeah, can't be dragging. Drag me. Yeah, you can drag him, but willingly he doesn't want to go. Yeah. Oh, Tim, just. I won't. You got this, Tim. Oh my God. The madman equally is like scampering backwards. <laughs> no, 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 I cannot go. I cannot go this way. This way is dangerous. Dangerous. Death. Death oh, no. is here. Death is here. Just think Death. of how proud Joyliff would be. Um, don't do it, Tim. Don't want to do it. You don't want to do it, Tim. Yeah. You can't do it. You jo can't Joyliff won't be proud. Joyliff will be... You'll be dead. Joyliff won't be happy with that. Yeah, she'll be pissed at me for getting myself killed. This horrible... Black hell. Do any of you stop the madman? Yeah, we will. We'll, yeah, yeah. We'll, oh, we'll I'll pull try, We're going to try and stop them both. Um, I'm just trying to... Just drag them off? We'd have we're, to... We're, I think that's the only thing we've got, really, is to just drag them as best we can. Roll a grapple we'll check for the, for the madman. Grapple him. Uh, who's going to take the madman? Who's going to take Tim? Tim well, just well, actually, well, Craig, Craig, Craig seems unaffected, right? So Craig can take Tim because Tim's like quite, you know, Now clean, come but... on, now I warned you, you might have to be dragged, so just accept it and move on. And Tim what he would weapons. probably do is he'd try to get you on your back, mm. and then just drag you by your shell, so you're yeah. kind of like a kicking and screaming toddler. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> All right, Bailey's gonna try and get the um. Thing. That is a thirteen athletics. Okay, trust it. Fight, uh, fight your bit, but he's he's quite weak actually. So you just grab him and start dragging him that way. He's like, no, 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 dangerous, dangerous, scary, scary. I've been here before. I've been here terrible, terrible times, terrible times. He hurts. He is bad. He is bad. It's dangerous, dangerous, bad. Well, see, if you've been here before and you were fine, then I'm sure you'll be fine now. Oh, Don't worry no. about voices, it. Voices, voices, scary, scary voices, voices. You hear voices all the time. It's fine. I agree with him. You trust him. <laughs> <laughs> trust, trust him. <laughs> trust him, I say. Right, carry on. Oh, carry on. Hopefully they'll snap out of it. Uh, so you are slowed, but you drag them on. As you carry on dragging them on. Do eventually get to another point. Uh, those that succeeded, could I ask you to roll another wisdom saving throw, please? Lovely. As you walk, and as you're walking on, you kind of see these like, like these 2D viewpoints, these like small orbs of people flying. One person, their teeth are falling out. Another person, their sailing the open seas another one is being attacked by this monster one other one there is a monster underneath their bed and all these just images kind of peer out to you as you're walking through so what do you guys get for the wisdom saving throws 19 14 15 okay you battle through maintaining your composure and still going through and as you do these things i need a dexterity saving throw from elizora and a dexterity saving throw from Elarius. 19 Five. again do i get disadvantage because i'm technically bland or is it because i'm okay with the hell? you got you got your bird so you're okay. all right <clears throat> what did you say you got um Laris? Five. Five. So, almost because of your bird giving you your vision, it flies around for a moment, and as it does, it spots out of the portal, one of the monster's tentacles reaches for you, Elizora, and as you dive out the way, as it tries to pull you in, it misses. And Elarius, this monster from under the bed, the claws drag out and try to slash at you and as they do you take seven slashing damage as this just nightmare peers out Krellick just turns around to look at all of you and goes as I said before nightmares here are much more real than you think oh, damn if we gotta keep our wits about us here or as you carry on the journey you see more of these things, but now you're ready for them, so you look out and dodge. And you see every dream, every nightmare you can think of, each nightmare, whatever 
thing is in their attempts. It's small ways to pluck at you with impossible ways to take away what's there. Tim and the madman, can they re-roll their wisdom saving throw, please? Oh, that's worse. 21. 21, okay, the madman is just like, oh, this is it. Place of clarity, place of calm. Oh, I got nine. Streams, like it. Places everywhere, everywhere here. Tim, you're still king of screen. You don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. You want to leave. You want to leave bad. Is there anything you can do to leave? It's my question. It is not much further. Just stop resisting, and we will get there soon enough. Is, if, it, if it's actually worth like like pinching him, like basically doing an unarmed strike, slapping him, actual slapping him. Yeah, smack me. Um, I think it, as she's sort of seen like the madman be okay, she'll just walk over to him and just give him a slap him, basically just snap out of it, Tim. Roll for uh, what's your unarmed strike? I don't. Well, unarmed strike's one plus strength, right? Yeah. So it's just so. it's just one damage. Okay, so you take one, Tim. Mm -hmm. Reroll your saving throw with advantage. Nice. Excellent. That's a pass. That's eighteen. At least I think it's yeah. a pass. Yeah. So you come to in your clarity, you look round and you realise that. They just slapped you. This isn't scary at all. <laughs> you should have just said so. <laughs> uh, Tim. Tim. Never change. <laughs> Thank you, Captain. Right. Let's go. Nearly there, apparently. You reach an edge where there is a staircase down. Not like a perfectly formed staircase, but more something that is just made out of sand almost as you walk on this sand to this staircase down it just goes deeper and deeper and deeper where even the dreams seem to dissipate and you are just in the darkness emptiness of thought almost and as you walk down you feel a chill down your necks there are chains long large chains are sitting along this path thick a single chain link probably bigger than you in size as you walk down we are almost there it's not much longer now you must ready your sails and eventually to this base. No shelter. No growth. A desert underneath an ocean. All you can see are these chains coming down to this point. And then you spot, because it's dimly lit, it's hard to see. And you can see from another direction these chains coming to the same point and from another direction and another direction as you are left in this dark desert under this sea of dreams where even the nightmares can't touch and as you walk forward Krillik turns to you all and he says now what happens next is going to be difficult. Be ready. This will not be easy. But this is the only way. I'm going to put Death Ward on um, one of you guys. <laughs> oh, maybe Death Ward on the um, on the Madman, actually. Would that be best? That's a good Sorry, call, idea. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Be ready now. For in this chance, we can save our world. Ready for we're going to be. Mm. And I know that our relationships have been tenuous. We That's trust in the one thing. It's an understatement. I have done everything for my people. He turns around 
takes a deep breath deep and walks forward I would follow as he's wherever he's walking as as he walks it's as if it walks into this cloud of darkness almost a veil in a way you all walk through the veil yeah, yeah. we followed him this far through god knows yeah. what so why not mm. Wait, before, quick question uh, have we used the orb at any point during this like time to navigate or has just been walking effectively a straight line generally the orb you have he's been walking generally in the straight direction but as you've been using the you've been using the orb to navigate yourselves but it's generally in this direction and it seems like the trident is beyond this veil so it feels like don't need to use the orb anymore yeah okay definitely detuned then so she can see normal Good okay idea. so now you just you got the orb yeah yeah in the pocket or wherever it goes yeah in cool. the veil as you walk into the veil you are met with the same space you were in before but this time voidless it is as if whichever direction you walk you do not move the credit stands there for a moment looking in a single direction as none of you can leave none of you can walk back forward right or left you're all stuck in the same position this space emptied of its capability of direction he takes one more deep breath and he looks out onto a dis something in the distance a form you do not know. Silhouette almost looks like something with a fin. A long tail swimming towards you. But as it approaches closer, it seems to have arms. One hand holding what looks like a trident. As this creature sails towards you, their form becomes more immersed in the presence of light as Tim's shell is still lit up. Coral-like horns emanate from their head and seaweed mixed in with tentacle-like hair stretched down to their back, their arms outstretched, one bearing the trident and some tentacles extending out from their back they are huge in comparison to you gargantuan even and a voice echoes from this being she looks feminine in form seaweed kind of wrapped over her torso who will fin basically being her entire lower half. This voice does not speak in a language you understand any of you. It's almost like a call. You spot a tear on Krennic's eye. Be already. And you just hear, Hello, sweet peas. Thank you so much for bringing me my toys. I've been missing them so abhorrently. And as your facial expressions change hers kind of shifts and as she smiles you see these piranha like teeth would you prefer if I spoke like this yes I am very changeable I can do whatever you like really but I like to go with my own sort of rhythm sweet peas now hand them over and we can get on with It's the only way. Trust me for a moment. <coughs> he takes his bag at his side. And he opens up the top, empties it out, and every single artifact flows out. You see the bottle with what looks like a ship in it. You see the whistle. You see and uh, yes, Elisora, you would recognize both 
her voice, her mannerisms, and her form. As she's also wrapped up in these chains, slightly rusted, kind of extending out infinitely in this space. And as he's emptying this out, the compass, the sword, the egg, all the artifacts spilling out, and Elizora, the globe itself, lurches from your pocket, flies out the water, and he simply takes off the crown and lets it float. As each of these pieces slam into her, the crown on her head, the whistle her throat, the ship to her torso, the egg uh, to her lower abdomen, all these places slamming into the, her body, there is suddenly a beginning piercing of light of where they are touching her skin. And almost it is enveloping her. And he quickly turns to all of you and he looks at uh, all of you. I know this looks bad, but the only way to destroy them is if she and her, she and them are combining once again together. It is their weakest point. I have been playing the long game a long time, and this is the only point at which we have a chance of stopping her from killing us, killing everyone on the surface. Now, right now, we have to buy at her everything we have. Are you with me? Vader will draw uh. her sword. Vader will draw her swords. And uh, he'll turn on her wings. Yeah, you will have a moment to do something. Yeah. Yeah, she'll, she'll draw her swords, turn on her wings and go. Why not, eh? I'll let you all take a moment just to ponder that while I. Uh, it, it, I mean. Seems That's like it. a big bad, but he's also a big bad. What do we do? I mean, we got no option now. And the thing we we are literally just... staring down Geneptia, re-merging with all her artifacts. I mean, upside. I mean, basically, we've got one of two options. Well, we've got two options: either we fight her, or we play the madman card and get out, and then Geneptia does God knows what to flood. Mm. Like, there's no. Yeah, let's kill God first. I think yeah, I can't see if there's any other options there really. Well, no, not not good ones. <laughs> Whatever Matt's thinking right now is definitely not one of the good options. <laughs> uh... Probably, I, I would imagine she, he's you know, Elizor is probably thinking of making a dark pack with Geneptia as she's the strongest side, but you know. Well, <laughs> um, so this is Joanne's, Joanne's or Jones's. This is, is yes. Uh, that's why I. Uh, that's why I asked Arthur. So it's not Geneptia. But I thought I thought the pieces were pieces of Geneptia, unless and the she changed up. unless she changed when she got rid of them to the uh, Joe. I don't know anything about any of that. All I know is that Arthur suggests that that is Joanne. That's Jones. Yeah, well, that's, that's Jones. But we know that. So unless Jones becomes Geneptia. Names are very similar. So Jones is just like a powered down version. Mm. Um. Speaking of which, while you're all getting ready, he's like, we have about, I don't know, four seconds before she uh, will defend herself. So I yeah. highly suggest if you have any questions, oh, you ask them now. No, it's now or never. Who, exa who exactly are we fight here? Because Alaris has no idea. Yeah. <laughs> this is Jones, one of the ferrymen, uh, the banished Joe Neptia, who caused the flood quite a long time ago. Any other questions? They're one and the same. Okay. He just goes like this to your head, and it's just like I don't go down for this. And he presses <laughs> on you, your on your forehead with his thumb, and kind of like grasps the top of your head. When he does, you are shook with his memories. Um, in immediacy and he shows you when he was left for dead by Branimir Bloodbeard when he was bleeding out the ship on fire and him on the plank of wood rolling off cut deep feeling the salt water burn sinking to the depths and as he did 
legendary man that picked him up was Jones. And she spoke needingly on back to him of how he can be such a great man and do great things. He felt good. And you can feel in this memory he's infatuated with her a bit. Like this great power she has. And he accepts does he starts collating power and when he does that she diverges with him her past and of how after the first flood everything changed she got it into her head through whispers and a friend of hers long ago the only true way to keep her worshippers was to show them fear. And so she did the flood to wipe out as many of the other worshippers so she'd be the only one powerful enough to almost rule the gods. And they banished her for this because it didn't work. They banished her here. And with all the dead souls she caused, the backlog for death itself, she was forced to become a ferryman to get the souls back. But she knew that was her way out. Because if she just got the right person, which she always said was Krellig, even though he didn't believe that, she could find her way to claw back and get revenged. Revenge on all the gods that banished her there. And the minute you come out of it, he's just like, right now, any other questions? Does she have a weakness? Oh, no, right we now <laughs> is about it. We have to anyway, destroy. Anyway, we have do we try and get the artifacts out of her or anything like that? Attack the artifacts. They will defend themselves. Cool. If we can destroy them, it will destroy her as now they are connected. Right. There's no separation anymore. Go for that you sever bottle. each piece. <laughs> It takes them apart but nice. it will they will defend themselves so be cautious in how you attack oh, i've only got the one so yeah sure how can how i mean obviously you said she's gargantuan are we able to like get around her up there like how free bloom is movement can we i mean i can oh, yeah. fly anyway but like obviously um for everybody else when my thing runs out like if she's got if she's wearing a crown on her head for example how are we gonna get up there you are in you are still in some kind of astral scene as this is happening that trying to move around that inescapable movement is no longer happening now you can move you can float right okay so we it's can... the same rules as if you were in the astral sea so you can float your walking speed yeah, 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 yeah. If you've gained a flying speed faster than that, then use that. That would be yeah, your, no. your, no. your change. No, my flight speed, I think, pretty sure my flight speed is the same as my walk speed, so that's fine. As she's there, all the artifacts at this stage, they've begun to, like, spin around her. And she is locked in, her eyes are glowing, and she is just in this position, stuck. So she's holding the skeletal sword in one of her tentacles. Is yes. That okay. The moment. Well, at the moment, the artifacts are now spinning around her. But as she grabbed them, as they all recoiled to her, that's where she gripped them. Yeah. All right. So, Bailey, you activate that. So, what do the rest of you do? You have a moment to do something before I'm going to ask for initiative rolls. Turn your elbows on. <laughs> I'll blow my horn. For the wisdom bonus. Okay. That last fight, isn't it? Is is looking to be our last fight. Mm. Uh, and then I'll put a shield of faith on whoever we reckon needs it most. Probably Vale. Probably Vela. Got them before, because Vela is going to be oh. up to get him in there. Yeah, plus two Tracy, and I'll be up there with you. Do you have any flavor you want to add on your wisdom call? Is this? Um, she's bearing down on us, and I toot the horn in her face. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it. Okay, and Alaris? Yeah, I think I'm just going to prepare. Uh, what, what's the environment saying we're in? It's not water. It's not quite water, quite no. Space. You are in essentially the astral sea, so you can you can float and move uh, like flying speed, but at your walking speed distance. Okay. So you, if, thirty feet walking speed, you can do thirty feet flying speed in this space. So, but your slippers are spider climbing is pretty much pointless. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's no be. there's no yeah. walls here. There's yeah, no well, yeah. like it's all just the chains that are attached to her and they just go off infinitely and you can see as this is going around her there are light and when I say light I mean literally piercing light cracks appearing in some of these chains oh okay so she's breaking the rules I was wondering whether we need to break those but I guess not I'm just going to prepare a fireball well, shot shoot one off you, get, you can get one yeah, if I can get one now, I'll, hell yeah, yeah, I'll shoot one now. Okay. Let me roll. Yeah, roll damage because it's just going to hit. Okay. You've already said what you're doing. That's a bonus action, though. Oh, I suppose blowing the horn probably wasn't. That A moment to do something. Bonus action, action, or reaction. Well. It's just one well. thing you get to do. Okay. And then I'm rolling initiative. Well, it was a surprise round. No, it's not a surprise round. Trust me, she is not surprised. <laughs> I've got 28 fire damage on that. Okay, 28 fire damage. Yeah. Is there any visible impact reaction? So as it blasts forth, you see uh, the trident like come up in front of it. And as the trident takes it, it seems resistant to the damage. At this point, while the other objects are orbiting, the trident seemingly hovering in front and the globe also comes to meet it as they circle each other kind of between all of you and her Elizora, would you like to do one thing uh, uh, I don't know well I don't know sorry I know the one thing I want to do which is polymorph into a giant ape nice standard <laughs> He, lo he looks you, Elizora, before you change, by the way. Krellick does, and he just says, She is in a locked state. She cannot end our lives here or now. We have every advantage on her. But in her death, I do not know what happens to us. You should know that. When she dies, that's when you got to call in your uh, thing, I guess. See if it works. If she dies. If, if she kills us first, but see. Now, could we all roll initiative, please? Oh, yeah. If there's ever a time to fire Star Cook's pistol at it, it'd be now. Now. <clears throat> Krellig. Eight. Oh, you can't now, yeah. Krellig will not be a um, an initiative in combat. Instead, Krellig is a legendary action you will get to choose when you use. Okay. And it is simply, you get three Krelligs, and you can simply choose per turn. attack. You get three Krelligs per turn. You get three Krellig actions per turn. And you can choose to attack, to heal, or to help and aid. Help and aid is any time you do a saving throw, any time you do uh, an attack roll. Anytime you have to do something, he can essentially give you advantage and add potency to what you do. So if it's a saving throw and you pass, you might get no damage because of Krellig. If it's an attack and you use Krellig, it might have extra damage on top. Like, that's what the aid is. The attack is he will do his own attack, at her or at an object and we'll see how that goes and the heal is he will attempt to heal one of you and I will roll to see how that healing does 
Does he have health okay. points? Hit point. He does not. He is almost out of the fight in this respect. There is, if there is a mechanical reason he cannot fight, legendary Krellig actions are inaccessible. So, so he's, he's not technically going to be targeted by. By her. By her. Technically, well, she's... I will say if you want to use him as an aid, and you suggest that he takes damage for you then I will allow that, but that may limit the amount of legendary Krellig actions you'll get in a turn. He's, he's he's a flexible mechanic. If you have an idea you want to use him for, yeah, I'm willing to barter. Yeah. I mean, giving me advantage <laughs> on my attacks is automatically just going to be yeah, that's very helpful. Crazy. Like, because then I can just sneak attack. Like, no, I mean, I can get it anyway if I'm up, up close to her anyway, because um, I've got my yeah. thing where if I'm the only person there. I get them anyway, but um, yeah, we could use them for that. But I think healing is probably what's going to, or attacking. But yeah, that's fair enough. You're assuming that everyone in this fight is fighting for the same goal, though. No, but with the, that's irrelevant. I mean, that's that's a, that's the way things are anyway. But at well, the moment, no, because we... yeah, Elizor <laughs> might not be necessarily fighting. For the same goal. Shock horror. <laughs> Shock horror. Um, but that's fine. I mean, at the moment, we're just like, we're, we've got a, a, a god reforming themselves in front of us. I think that's mm -hmm. the sort of priority over whatever agenda Elizora has. So, um, that's what it, it is. What it is. Uh, initiative, I got 15. 16. 15. Oh, sorry. 15. Elizora, what did you get? 16. 16. Alaris? 16. 16. Hmm. You both have the same initiative bonus. Can you re-roll, please, you two? Roll. Six. Okay, so Alaris. You will take priority on that one. And Alaris, you will go first. What about the Madman? The madman goes on your go. I'm not going to tell you what he can do. I'm going to ask you if you want him to try to do something or not. Unless you call his name, it's going to be random. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, yeah. I'll say that for the right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, so far I didn't work too well. What else have I got? Yeah, I'll throw a classic orb. What should I Probably go thunder. Safe bet. Might as well cycle through them. We're not going to know either way. Cold, I think, is probably a safe assumption that it's not going to work. Um, I would assume fire cold doesn't. wouldn't work either. Um, yeah. Fire, we know, kind of doesn't, at least while the trident's around. So, yeah, thunder's always mm. a good shout. Yeah, I'm going to go with thunder. The first one, I don't have to roll. Do I have to roll? To attack? Mm hmm yeah, yeah you do now cool that's 25 to hit 25 oh. to hit yeah that's gonna hit and that's 35 under damage high rolls 35 thunder damage as this like slams across and you see the vibrations of these sound waves the trident kind of blocks in and seems resistant to the effects right so the trident's basically acting as a sort of magical barrier then it sounds like yeah next is da -da -da -da. unless you want to do anything else no not right now that is aura what would you like to do the biggest question of my night the biggest question oh, oh, of the campaign, um, at least for Lesor. Uh, is Matt going to betray us again? <laughs> I don't, oh, can't have happened two campaigns in a row. Come on. Yeah, it's always a... <laughs> it oh, I can't believe it. Can it. Two, campaigns two campaigns in a row. Uh, Lesor attacks Tim. Oh. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> 
No man, Krellick did his deal for love. What did you do it for? That's my question. Life. Yeah. I knew it. <laughs> Alright, it's uh, uh two fists against him. In this almost like not in this betrayal, but in this action, Elizora, in this loyalty, you feel a burst of energy within you. And I give you a godly token. Ooh. I don't know what it does. But just, I'm going to tick the inspiration just because I've got. Just yeah, you, you, can, you can tick the inspiration. It's not quite the same thing, but you have a godly token. So you can use it as you see fit, as you feel Jones pleased with your loyalty. So the first hit was uh, on Tim was. 24. It's a hit. Um, and the second one was a 13. That's a miss. Okay. Um, so that's a 3d10. Uh, plus 6. It's 29. Um, bludgeoning. Yeah, 29 bludgeoning. I'm going to say we use one of Krellig's legendary actions to attack Alizora. I was going to say, if it's not clear, Elizora, you don't have access to Corelli's <laughs> legendary <I know>. actions. <laughs> oh, no shit. That's what I was asking, is he targetable? <laughs> yeah, no, Does he I, have health if you, points? If you have an idea of how you would like to take him out of the fight, could be anything. Could be a banishment. Could be anything along those lines. He's still a creature. There's still things you could do to him. If you would like to... I would say in this instance, as you're choosing that side, if you would like to target him with an attack, I do have his health pool, and we could do it based on that. Okay. Cool. Right, but he will. He yeah. will attack you with. Yeah. First, it's first is down the healer for. Couple eldritch blasts, and they all hit. The three. I need to know each one individually because of um, concentration. Oh, of course. Uh, first one's 14. That's a pass on the first one. Second one's 8. Oh, sorry. I'm just giving you the damage because I know they all hit. Yeah, that's fine. Damage okay, is cool. fine. I just, need, I just need to know the damage because then I need to know if it's... If it's um, oh, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, concentration. Course, course, course. Uh, well, I don't think any of them's going to be above 20, so I think 10 is going to be your thing for each one. Yeah, the third one's eight, and the final one's sixteen. So yeah, they're all second one passes. Not twenty in the last one. Nice. Ape still goes. Who just used them all on Elizora? No, it's just one no, action. Just one. one action. So he's it's he's taken Eldritch Blast as attack turn. action, and he's used it. Yes, yeah, but three three Eldritch round. Blast is three blasts. Yeah. At his level. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, he's yeah. he's got. Well, he's got four blasts. Did one of them miss? No, they, they all hit. I said, oh, but two of them were eight. Oh. Because oh. okay. oh. uh, we only counted three pieces yeah. of damage. Yeah, no, two, two, two of them were eight. And uh, you still have two legendary Krellig actions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that would pass as well. As if, as if players needed more actions, but here we are. Amen. Now we've got two things to deal with. <laughs> so mm. Now you've got two things to deal with, yeah. yeah. This is great. Right, carrying on. <clears throat> so who's next? Da, 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 da. Baylor, what would you like oh, to see? Okay, I did kind of want it. Uh, well, she's going to go and attack at Azora, um, sort of almost pivoting on the spot, so taking a step but lunging backwards um, to attack at Azora. Where's the, where is that? Azora? Oh, wherever. Down, down here. Well, she would have gone towards him, right? But yeah, yeah, there. yeah. So coming up to the back, yeah. back of Elizora, um, basically, Jason. to go in, uh, to basically go in for a sneak attack. Uh, I do have these things, but I will add to. Actually, I've got the shield. I'm going to add to the damage. So that is a 24 to hit. It's hit. 11 piercing damage. And I assume uh, it all, it's all part of the same attack, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, sneak attack is 5d6. That is 16. 
plus 11, so 27 damage on that. So what have you got to hit? Um, 26, 13. Yeah, I rolled a 19. Okay. And then... Get ready for concentration. Yeah. Or advantage. I'll go in with the offhand. That was, yeah, 17 to hit. That is a bar. 9 damage on the Storm Sword. I'm, tem I'm wondering whether we should go for another... <laughs> for another, another cane attack. As well. Yeah, and, unless, unless you guys, I mean, unless you guys want it. Well, how much? How much do, you want? do you want him to heal you instead? How much healing does he do? Do we know? No, we don't. We haven't done it yet. Oh, we can... I will say there's two options: he either heals all of you for a little, or one of you for a lot. And d does he get free actions every turn? Every round. Every round. Every round. Free... Yes, use all the attacks. But no, they're no. but they're legendary, so they can slot in after any person's yeah. turn. Okay. If you want to burn a... two actions after one person's turn as well, or all three actions after one person's turn, I will allow that as well. Probably better to stagger them out, just in case the situation changes. We don't want to, we don't want to burn them all on the first turn. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> Save for heals, I reckon. And then use Save... them for attacks at the bottom of the round if we have to. Okay, yeah. so... Alright, fine. So we'll do nothing. Do we do nothing then for now and wait until... Who's at the bottom of the... Well, we don't know, do we? I'm at the top. I'm, I'm pretty low, top. I think. So who's had a turn? Everyone, Tim hasn't had a turn, and Jolentia had hasn't had a turn. Are you, so, are, you, okay. are, you are you done, Bela? You good? Yes. Yeah. yeah. As the trident and the globe tip forward, let us see what they do. And suddenly, the entire room is filled with magical darkness. So none of you can see. So while none of you can see, I think it's easy just to <laughs> make her. She disappears. Can Elizora see? Because then you're in. Yes, Elizora, you are seemingly unaffected, <laughs> and that is the end of her turn. Tim, what would you like to do? You are covered in darkness. Oh, you cannot see, next. even with the magical light. A on big ape next to me, still. You can't tell. Probably hear. You've not done. Probably hear the breathing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... Have a sense of their presence because it's a huge creature still. So. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to spell magic or anything, do you? I do. No. I do not. I was thinking anti-life shell, which would stop the ape using fist attacks. That's ten feet. So it would cover all of us? That, yes, that is very handy. So yeah, the ape yeah, won't be able to touch we'll us, but we'll be, we'll be able to touch everyone else. Yeah. Which is... Wait, wait, useful. wait. Assuming Varric sends out from you and the 10-foot radius and moves with you, remaining creatures into you and hedging out creatures other than antenna constructs. But I'm already within 10 feet of you. Yeah, so you get pushed out. Because it extends, right? Actually, I think it's we'd all get pushed out. No, we'd all, we'd all get pushed out. It's only protecting you. It only prevents an affected creature from passing or reaching through, though. But who's affected? The ape. It's not creatures other than undead. Yeah, just you, I think. What yeah. do you think, Arthur? Literally just about to read the spell. I was trying to get through all my tabs. I think it's just you. I think it is just you. Because there's nothing in here that dictates you get to pick who stays and who goes. Yeah. It's literally everything that's organic apart from you, gets pushed out. Yeah, it says and... the barrier prevents and... Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Do you not choose the yeah. target? Yeah. Yeah, no, you don't choose the target. No. Because it's yeah, self? No, this ranges, is just everything ranges, that lives. Ranger's self. So we would all get pushed out. Uh, bummer. But you can still cast through it, no problem. Yeah. Yes. So you are... It's a good protector healer thing. Obviously, Jonaptia can still attack you with the spells, but it means yeah. that Azora can't. That, or I could try to banish him. Banish Azora. As an ape, she probably hasn't got a lot of... Um, Charisma, prevent... it would be. Yeah. I don't think as the ape, she's probably got a lot less, because especially, you can't yeah. banish her when she's in a warlock form. It's yeah. not happening. 
yeah, yeah, definitely not. That's what I was thinking. Um, Let's save the animation. And, shelf. you know what's funny yeah. about that? What's funny, we are on a separate plane of existence, which means... <laughs> Elazora is not native to this plane of existence, which means mm -hmm. if you can keep your concentration, Elazora won't come back. So banishment is probably the best call for Elazora. Return to its we... home plane. I'll give that yeah. a go then. Can we so... use a legendary action to give Elazora disadvantage? In any possible mm. way. <laughs> you could give a legendary action to aid Tim in using banishment. Yeah. I say yes. How, how do we, how would that work? Yeah, just use the yeah. card. I'll, I'll give you the can these, so these Can these happen at any time then? Not at the end of the turn? They're like doesn't super legendary. It doesn't okay. have to be at the end of the turn. It's just Instant. you want to use card, his card. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I like that idea. All right. So banishment, that's a fourth level slot. You have to be an 18 charisma saving mm. throw. The three and polymorph. The guard targets, game statistics. Yeah, including mental, mental ability scores. scores. Yeah, yeah, I replaced just, by this. Yeah, so yeah. Just yeah, double yeah. checking because of considering yeah, yeah, how pivotal. Uh, yeah. Eight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, was it eight. wisdom? You said charisma. charisma. The charisma. Oh, I've got. It's going to be 18. I've got plus eight charisma. What? Is it oh, right. <laughs> no, plus four, plus four charisma with the eight. <laughs> Hey, apes are pretty charismatic. Intimidating at the very least. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah, they got plus eight on their saving throw. That's not, that's not nice. Let me just double check the creature. Let me, because it might, because I'm using it as a wild shape, it might be doing things. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, if you're using it as a wild shape, then it'll be using yours. I have to, to make it appear on my stats, so I wanna. The giant ape creature. Yeah, so it's minus two, Chris, there we go. There we go, that's way better. That makes more sense, because, you know, it's, they're not, well, they're grilled rod, you know. Alright, let me roll, let me roll. You have um disadvantage on the saving throw. However, I do have a godly inspiration. You God do token. have a godly token, that is true. Let's use that. Can we count as well with another legendary action? <laughs> this is a godly token. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how well, we don't know what the godly token uh, is. We don't even know if she uh, has it, so so what happens? Think. The array of events. So, to, As... to be clear, if, if if it doesn't happen, I fail. But okay. hence the godly inspiration. As uh, Tim, as you begin to cast banishment, Krellig sort of puts his hand on your shoulder and his eyes light up and he fuels you with uh, energy. And what he also does is he tries to use... Um, some illusion magic to confuse the ape to kind of distract of what you're doing that's why you had the disadvantage but Elizora, as this is happening as you feel yourself begin to pop out of existence the trident slams down sticking into the dirt and as it does it spins with an immense speed you almost re-envelop into your previous position so the banishment went off but then you get yanked back into existence where you were before by Jones's power and Tim unless there's anything else you'd like to do on your turn bonus action but can't use another spell can I so no nothing then next time on Pirate Adventures how will this betrayal develop is there even a chance for you all to survive this now that one of you has turned against the others let's find out next time on pirate adventures <laughs>